everyone, good morning and welcome to The View on Africa. Today is a special occasion because it's Africa Day tomorrow, but many countries have been celebrating Africa Day since uh, the beginning of the month, actually. So 25 May, the celebration of the founding of the OAU in 1963. And on this occasion, we actually um, want to look at some cross-cutting issues. Uh, one could ask the question, why are we specifically dealing with um, liberation movements on this occasion? But um, so, so these are one of the, the issues that we are going to look at uh, in the context of what is happening within uh, the African Union and uh, the calls for greater African unity, also the legacy of uh, colonialism and the calls for decolonizing economies and, uh, and knowledge on the continent that we are dealing with in South Africa a lot. So maybe just to start off with, um, when we look at the, the map of, of the continent, um, the blue, as you will see, indicates the countries where former liberation movements are still in power and have been since independence. Um, Algeria, the uh, um, FLN, and then the five countries that we will be looking at this morning, Angola, Namibia, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique, where um, former lib liberation movements came to power in the mid-1970s, 80s, and the, late, uh, the latest one, South Africa, 1994, after the end of apartheid, these are uh, countries that uh, where former liberation movements still have strong links with one another and uh, a stronghold on power. But in the last couple of years, we've seen increasingly liberation movements coming under pressure and having to renew from within. And so this is the debate um, that we would like to raise today is whether there is that capacity and what do liberation movements have to offer for the renewal and for these calls for new African unity um, that is being discussed uh, during uh, Africa Day. So basically, um, if we look at uh, these five countries, Interestingly, as I said, what sets them a little bit apart from the rest of the continent is the fact that liberation came relatively late. And so the struggles that we are seeing now, uh, past uh, after 2000, these last couple of years, are things that some African countries that came, uh, were independent since 1960s, gone on 1957, uh, were dealing with in the early 1990s. So there is that time lapse and later on when I will be discussing uh, what this means for the African Union, um, I think that historical time difference uh, comes into play in a sense um, when, when we look at the differences between what are happening in these countries and, uh, and elsewhere. So I think that's the one major similarity between um, Mozambique, Angola, Zimbabwe, Namibia, South Africa, where there were often violent uh, liberation struggles, strong liberation movements. Uh, so if we start at the top and um, Frelimo in Mozambique, the MPLA in Angola, um, ZANU PF, ZAPU and ZANU in Zimbabwe, and uh, SWAPU, of course, in Namibia, and then the ANC in South Africa. Strong, powerful liberation movements with strong links, many of them together in exile in Zambia and elsewhere, um, with a proud tradition and um, the, a heroic battle in, in many cases for independence. So these are the similarities that these our, our Southern African liberation movements that have turned into political parties have uh, in common. But of course, I just want to go through them very quickly. There are major differences as well. In, in Angola and Zimbabwe, the we have had almost a uh, single individual rule since the end of uh, the colonial era. 
President Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe uh, has been in power since 1980. President Dos Santos since 79, so, so not long after independence. We've had uh, authorities concentrated in one individual. Um, and those, I, I think, are of the five countries, the, some of the major differences in a sense that the, um, the liberation movements were centered around the authority of one individual, which is a bit less the case uh, when we look at um, Namibia, Swapu. There have been a change of, uh, of leadership, Samjoma, Puhamba, um, President Gangop. Uh, and Swapu is actually one of the uh, liberation movements on the continent or parties that have gained in popularity and they've managed to increase their scores at the polls um, every year, which is not the case with many of our other parties. Um, in Mozambique, the same thing as in Namibia, a change of hands um, after the end of the um, civil war with Renamo. So um, there have been change of government. Uh, Samora Marshall, as, as people know, um, President uh, Chesano, um, President Gebuza, and now uh, President uh, Nusi. Uh, so there have been uh, that less of that authoritarian um, focusing power in the hands of one single individual. South Africa I mentioned last because there's a little bit of a different configuration, also a very, very strong, powerful uh, liberation movement, one of the oldest um, political parties on the continent, the African National Congress, that is still in power, but also now facing huge um, internal struggle and um, strife uh, and it's a little bit different because the fight against apartheid only ended in uh, in 1994 so more recently um, so there are major differences but the theorists of uh, liberation movements and there have been many studies done and books written about the nature of liberation movements there are certain issues that are common to these parties that I've now described um, that hampers sometimes the d service delivery and the quality of the democracy and um, hampers perhaps these parties uh, to be, to reform from the inside and uh, to carry the continent forward and their countries forward, especially now uh, when we're speaking about Southern Africa. Of course, as I said, strong struggle credentials, there's no doubt about that. And in ceremonies and uh, celebrations, in speeches, those issues still come up. But increasingly, of course, the new generation is not really buying that narrative of the liberation struggle any longer. Authoritarian structures, as I said, especially in countries like Zimbabwe and Angola, we have that very top-down um, structures. And uh, the, the reason why they are common to many liberation movements, of course, is that is was the nature of the struggle against colonialism. Violent power struggles also liberation movements coming out of a situation of uh, violent uh, um, opposition to apartheid and, um, and uh, colonialism. Definitely there are nuances, as in all of these cases, the ANC has a strong democratic culture, has had, um, but Sometimes uh, there are also authoritarian tendencies that we can see maybe on a lower level. So the liberation parties are not all the same. And as I said, there's a lot of literature around that. Um, many are very secretive, uh, conspiracy theories uh, abound. There are many um, um, liberation parties that are very secretive and when we see issues around corruption for example the latest big scandal in Mozambique uh, in, in, that happened in 2013 there is almost that secretive nature and um, almost also paranoia of outsiders 
people who might not be loyal and um, those are strategies that also hamper uh, parties to go forward and then internal divisions that we are seeing arising. So the main point as I said earlier is to look at these liberation movements in the context of Africa Day and the context of African unity. So to come back to our map 1963 of course there, there were um, very, very strong leaders who took up the challenge to fight colonialism. We had Haile Selassie, Nyerere, the, our, our map um, uh, also, of course, Kenya, uh, the former president, uh, Kenyatta and Kruma. I highlighted Kenya also because, interestingly, it is a family member of uh, president Uhuru Kenyatta is, uh, of course, the son of the first president of a, a free Kenya. Um, but Kenya also played a big role, Tanzania, Nyerere, many other leaders, Moribo Keita in Mali and in Algeria. So um, these uh, leaders came together in Addis Ababa in 1963 to uh, launch this um, continental fight for the liberation of the continent. But where we are today is um, this split that we have seen on the continent when it comes to uh, a new vision for uh, African unity. The, the, uh, at the level of the African Union that we've seen at African Union summits through the last couple of years, the great sense of unity that was on the continent just after the founding of the uh, AU in 2002 seems to be um, under strain um, that strategic partnership that was forged by former President Thabo Mbeki, former President uh, Obasanjo of Nigeria, former President but uh, current president Bouteflika from Algeria, they were more strategic partnerships, whereas we've seen now in the last couple of years the um, internal divisions within the AU playing a much greater role. And what we've seen even in January this year at the AU summit with the rejoining of Morocco to the AU, there was a sense that there was divisions, not only language divisions, because that is what uh, everyone talks about when they talk about divisions in the AU, Francophones versus Anglophones, but also these countries led by former liberation movements uh, seem to have something that defines them differently. And there was this very strong voice, for example, against letting Morocco rejoin the AU, which did happen. There was consensus in the end, um, but there was a sense that the last colonial struggle on the continent is for the liberation of Western Sahara, and that didn't happen. Um, and Morocco is back in the AU despite that. So these historical um, divisions are coming to the fore and also because of the nature perhaps of liberation parties in power and of the crises that they are facing. Perhaps we could speak a little bit later more about the individual countries. So um, on the level of the African Union, we are now looking uh, at a new era also maybe for the African Union. President Paul Kagame of Rwanda is leading this drive for new reform. There have been many meetings since January. There's another summit at the end of June, the beginning of July in Addis Ababa where this will be discussed. So who's driving this reform? Where we had in 2002, it was definitely former President Thabo Mbeki and others, as I said, uh, first meetings were in Durban, then in Mozambique. But now power seems to have shifted in a sense and um, uh, President Kagame is driving these re reforms. There's a new continental leadership. There is the new chairperson, Musafaki Mohammed of Chad, who is in power, who is now the um, chair, chairperson of the AU Commission. So the whole configuration is very different. The, um, one of the features of the African Union reforms that we are watching very closely is to what extent um, power will be shifting from Addis Ababa to the regions. There's always this toing and froing between who really takes charge of, for example, solving crisis, and there's definitely not 
um, unity and on the continent when it comes to that. There are lots of internal divisions um, when it comes to who actually has to take charge of driving reform, uh, solving crisis on the continent. And then an interesting factor is uh, the current debate around decolonizing that we're seeing a lot in, in South Africa, definitely, when it comes to economic development, the feeling that uh, economic growth on the continent and hasn't benefited the majority of people uh, on the continent. There's also a more ideological background to that, uh, decolonizing knowledge, universities, syllabuses in schools, etc., which is an interesting um, youth uh, contribution that is coming, and it is something that is um, a little bit not being controlled by, it's an alternative movement, I would say, that is not really the stop-down authoritarian structures that we've seen at the African Union. So how that is going to influence the search for new unity on the continent, despite this historical divide, despite the difficulties that we're facing with and that former liberation movements are con are increasingly being faced with uh, on the continent. Almost we feel that a country like South Africa is so mired in its internal problems that it's inward looking and isn't driving this continental unity as, uh, as was the case when the AU was founded.